Next, we'll have a look at how to copy and move objects within and between documents. In the last video, we looked at how to add certain types of objects, such as auto shapes and pictures and clip art. Just to refresh that, to insert clip art, we use the drawing tool to clip on the, click on the clip art button. And then we search for some information about dogs or foxes. Made our selections on where we want to search and what kind of objects we want to find. And then clicked on go. That brought up a list of images that we can use. And we simply click on the image to insert it into the document. If that's not the right image, we can simply look for another until we find one that's suitable. And remember, it goes exactly where your cursor insertion point is. So you've got to make sure it's in the right place. Except you don't. And that's what we're going to look at now. I've inserted a picture there of a fox, and it's in the wrong place. So what can we do about it? We're going to be looking at two things, copying and moving. Because this is in the wrong place, we'll start with moving. To move a, an image, we can simply click and drag it. Just made that a little bit smaller so it's easier to see. We can simply click and drag it. So I'm clicking on the picture, keeping the mouse button down, and you can see the cursor there has changed. It's got a little rectangle on the end of the arrow. That suggests that it's carrying something. And wherever we point to, you can see I'm pointing in front of the word the, there's a little grey line just there. And when I let go of the mouse button, the picture will jump to that place. So I'm moving it from one place to another. Click and drag and let go. There's all kinds of problems with doing it in that method, but it does work. We are moving the image. Another way is to use the icons for cut, cut and paste. So we can select the object, single click, cut it from where it is, select where we want that object to go by clicking and putting the insertion point there, and then paste. And that image has now been moved to a new location. The benefit of doing it in that particular way is that you can do it between documents as well. So let's have a look at that. So we click once on the picture, cut using the scissors, switch using the window menu to another open document. If you don't know how to do this, look at one of the earlier videos. Now we've got the new document open, we can use the paste icon, and there's the picture of the fox. So if I switch back using the window button to the previous document, it's gone because we used cut, switched, and paste. We can reverse that, select the document, uh, the image, cut it, switch to another document, choose where we want it to go in the new document, and then paste. So that's moving the image. You can either click and drag it, oops, you can click and drag, or you can cut and paste. And that moves it. But what happens if we want a copy, a duplicate? Well, we can use the icons again to do this. Select the picture. Instead of doing cut, this time we'll choose copy. That puts a copy of that image in its memory on the clipboard. We can then choose where we want the copy to go by clicking, making sure the insertion point is where you want it to go. Take charge of that and then paste. And there's a copy of the image. It's been duplicated. Delete that by selecting and pressing the delete key. We can also do the same thing between documents. So we can select the image, copy, switch to a new document using the window menu, and paste. There's the picture of the dog. When I switch back, sorry, the fox, when I switch back, it's still there. So we've made a copy of that image. 
So we can use those techniques to copy and move the image between documents. Now, the problem is that's all that's in the syllabus, but people can get frustrated with pictures because it doesn't go quite where they want it to go. So we're going to have a look at a, a little bonus tip, and it's about text wrapping. When you insert an image in this way, it's classed as in line with text, and that means the computer treats it as though it was just another character. And that means it can only go where a character would go. It can only go, for example, where the H would go. It can only go where the V would go. At the bottom of this document, if I just switch the show hide on, at the bottom of this document, there's this big white space here, but we can't put the image there. Let's try and see what happens. Click, drag. I can put it here at the end of dog. It'll let me put it there, but I can't put it here. And that's because there isn't any text there to put it, to treat it as another character. If I try to put it here, it just jumps back up a little bit. So that can be very frustrating, the image not going where you want it to go. So I'm going to show you a little tip. It's called text wrapping. When you click on an image, you get the picture toolbar up. If it doesn't appear, it probably means that the last person to use a computer, see when I click on this and then click away, the toolbar disappears. On the image it appears, off the image it disappears. I click on the image. If people close that down with a cross instead of just clicking away, then there's a good chance that next time it won't reappear. So do be careful. If you don't want the toolbar there, just click off the picture. If when you click on the picture the toolbar doesn't arrive, then you can look for it using view and toolbars and picture. It's the picture toolbar. So click on the picture. We've got the picture toolbar and the icon we're interested in is this one here. It's called text wrapping. You've got to have the picture selected, otherwise this doesn't work. Text wrapping alters the way the image uh, interacts with the text around it. Now if I click on the picture, we've got a range of options to text wrap with. I'm only going to show you a couple of these just so you can have a play with them yourself. If I do square, then what happens is, there's a square around the outside of the image that the text wraps itself around. This image is now in free flow and wherever it is the text will wrap itself around the image. Because it's in that kind of free flowing system I can put it anywhere on the page even if there is no text there. So that's text wrapping. We really learn that about, about that in the next syllabus, the advanced, but for now you select the image, click on the text wrapping icon, choose square or tight, they're usually the best two, and then you can move that image anywhere on the screen. So to summarise what we've been doing in this lesson, we've been moving and copying. We can move by clicking and dragging, or by cutting and then pasting. That moves the object. You can copy it, duplicate it by selecting the object, copy and then paste and you get another object to work with.